So I had this in my hands recently, which is um, my wife's old battered original Game Boy. And I thought it would be really cool to design something like this myself. And I'm not talking about this sort of um, emulatory thing that everybody seems to be building these days, which just um, plays the ROMs for old games. And emulates systems, but what I'm what I was thinking of is build my own handheld game console, and then maybe develop a couple games on it. And do this basically as an exercise in designing and uh, programming. And with the PCL eighty six amplifier now almost finished up, um, just have to close up the case and then it's done. And there'll be probably a video on that. Um, I have room for another long-term large project. And I have a couple of these still running. The cathode oscilloscope is not really done. And the Z80 computer is also um, waiting to be finished. But I'm making progress on, on both of these. It's slow, but this is, ho this is a hobby and these are long-term projects. So um, I'm not in a hurry to finish them up. And... I don't mind having a couple projects running at the same time because um, I don't always feel like doing cathode ray oscilloscope things or I don't always feel like building stuff on the Z80 computer. Um, and that way I can, well, do what I really like to do instead of forcing myself to do to, to finish up a project. So, yeah, new project it is, handheld game console. Um, I recently finished up the laser cutter engraver, so that will be some help in that, um, especially the prototyping phase. Um, so let's look at possibilities for this. I thought about first. I thought about having uh, like this Game Boy. It's, it's missing its screen, but um, the protective cover of the screen, like having a rectangular monochrome screen, and having this sort of form factor, but. These are somewhat hard to get these days. Um, the displays which are much, much more common are these. Um, I think they're 16 by 9 or thereabouts displays. And these are a lot like on the um, Game Boy Advance. They're about the same form factor, they're a little bit larger, but... Um, and obviously this is color and has a lot more pixels than this, which is a 128 by 64 display. Um, I think this um, the driver on this is ST9620, something like that. So I thought this would be this would be a good point to start out having a monochrome screen with 128 by 64 is a manageable amount of pixels. I mean, I could have just as well put a 2.8 inch um, TFT screen in there, but I don't know that much about graphics programming. And for the fact that I don't really want to develop uh, a game console for, like as a product, but this is just something fun for me to do. Um, I think this is much more manageable. So we got on to actually designing the sort of rough outline for this. Um, this is what we came up with, which is a little bit similar to, to the Game Boy Advance, but it has some differences. Um, and yeah, obviously this is just a rough cardboard aided design sort of thing. We've got two buttons here, we've got two buttons here, and there yeah, are um, pad and the speakers are going to sit here and here I'm going to have two speakers and it's going to have I think an internal SD card somewhere which holds all the games but we'll talk about the hardware more um, in a minute on off switch up here and then also the charging cable will go in here. And I think this is something that um, could work quite well. It, 
even this cardboard model, it feels right in the hand for a sort of thing that you could play for a while. And all the buttons are, um, are easy to reach. We Beforehand, we had another layout, which uh, was a lot worse. So we put them a little up. So um, the other thing that I thought, because I'm personally quite fond of the, the sound of old games, is how cool would it be to put the um, actual sound chip from some sort of old console in there. And But I didn't want to go overboard. And there's a couple different options for this, and we'll talk about this in a second. But I chose a relatively simple chip that um, was featured in a couple old game consoles and home computers and we'll see what sort of fun we can have with that. So I think I talked enough. Let's look at the block diagram. I would like to do this a little more planned than I usually do things. So I drew a block diagram first of what I want to have on there and I'll zoom in. So we'll start by Getting stuff into focus. We'll start. Power will come from two of these batteries here. These are just an example. But this, about this sort of um, size, which is uh, TR10440. And these are in relation to the actual case. These are not that large, but um, 1200 milliamp hours. Um, should provide for quite a bit of playing time. It will be charged over a micro USB connector and have the TP4056 charger IC in it. I used this IC on plenty of project projects. It charges at a maximum of one amp, which if we have these batteries in there, it's perfectly fine. Um, and what I haven't used before, the uh, XB8089D protection circuit. But I don't anticipate too much problems with that. Usually these protection circuits are fairly easy to use and to lay out. You just connect the battery up to them and that's basically it. For the main processor, I want to use an STM32. Uh, it says a specific part number on there, but I'm not exactly sure that I want to use this processor yet. But what that fixes is the system voltage is going to be 3.3 uh, volts. And the issue with that is the ST7920 goes down to, I think, 2.7 volts. So the controller is perfectly fine um, with that. But the modules I have, these sort of modules that you can buy on eBay. These have an issue with the contrast uh, going away at about 4 volts. What I found though is that you can um, supply the chip with 5 volts and run the I.O. at 3.3 volt levels and it still works perfectly fine. I have to look into the data sheet if there's a little bit of a more elegant way to do this. Um, and especially how these modules are constructed, I don't know. It would be much nicer if I could um, set a jumper or something somewhere and just have it run in 3.3 volt mode. Because the, from the data sheet you can tell it has an internal provision for voltage doubling for the contrast. But it doesn't seem to be activated on the on these modules I have. And it seems to be really hard to find these for... Um, below 5 volts, the standard is 5 volts for some reason. Um, on these block diagrams, the bold black lines here, these are all power lines. Uh, these ones that go up here. And these here are data lines. And this is sound. So, we've got two voltage rails, the 3.3 and the 5 volt. The display is going to run off 5 volt, be connected to the processor, which is also going to manage the SD card interface, the buttons, 
And then for the sound chip, I've got the SN76489AN, which is um, an old sound chip, of course, over here. It comes in a dip package, but we'll fit that in somewhere. Um, it's a three channel um, square wave generator, and it's actually quite impressive what you can do with it. In, in terms of sound, there's a couple great projects on YouTube where you can um, listen to what sort of sound you can get out, get out from, from the chip. And in addition to having the sound from that chip, I also want to use the D2A converter on the, on the STM32 processor to have an additional channel where I can supplement the sound from this, which is just something that I think is nice to have. If there is a um, if there is a D two A converter on there, why not use it? So basically, the two sound channels go into a simple op amp mixer, which is connected to a five volt reel. There's Actually, an error on this block diagram, which is this chip is also connected to this 5 volt rail. Then it goes into a simple audio amplifier. It's probably going to be an LM386 um, or something else, sort of a low power um, amplifier that can run off 5 volts and then just go out to some 8 ohm speakers. So this is the um, sort of system I want to build. So things that I know that will work relatively easily is um, this, 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 this. I've done all of these before. I used this display before, although not from an STM32. I used it from a um, from an uh, Atmel processor. But since this is uh, this has an SPI input that shouldn't be too hard to do. The voltage supply on this, I have to read up on the data sheet, but we'll find a way to do this. This chip I've never used before. That will be um, an interesting process of finding out how it works. This I have done before. That should be fine. And SD card interface, I've never actually built one, but there is tons of examples on the internet. I think I should f be able to figure that out. So the um, big thing is I've never worked with these STM32 processors and it will be quite an interesting process of um, getting all the tools running and familiarizing myself with that sort of stuff. So I went on a bit of, bit of a shopping spree. I bought the ST-Link programmer version 2. I mean, there is these... I want to see if I have it somewhere around here. Oh, yeah. There is these cheaper eBay knockoff ST-Link things. And I have one of those and sort of this development board here. Um, but I couldn't get this to work reliably with the STM32 Cube software. So I thought, this is only 20 bucks. I thought, I'll... I'll invest in the actual programmer and um, then also probably put the whole interface on there so I have JTAG, JTAG and all sorts of things for debugging which will be um, helpful I'm sure. So another thing I bought is this um, development board just to have um, a good system for the verifying that the toolchain works. I want a known good system that I can verify that my tools are all working before I start laying out something with a processor on it and then it doesn't work and I debug it for, I don't know, two weeks just to find out that there's something wrong with the toolchain. <laughs> so I bought this. This was also not that expensive. I think it was eight or nine um, euros. And it has the... Uh, F103 on there 
And because I realized Mazda had free shipping over 50 euros is or dollars, I don't know. Um, I bought an additional couple of processors that I want to play around with, which is these really heavy lifting. I think these are meant for DSP applications. It is the FDM 32H750. And these are quite, quite grunty. These run at up to 480 megahertz. Um, and have a megabyte of RAM and all sorts, all sorts of peripherals. And then these little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to read the part number here. Doesn't focus well though. Uh, 32F100. So these are, I think, a little more realistic for the sort of application that I'm going for. Um, I also bought a couple of these STM32F103 um, chips, but I didn't buy them from Mouser, so they're not here yet because I ordered them from China. Um, I might use this. I think the, it's a good sort of sized microcontroller. Um, but the issue with this is that this is fairly limited in terms of um, RAM and memory. We'll see. Um, yeah, this here says... It's got 180, uh, 128 kilobytes of flash memory, 20 kilobytes of SRAM, which is not that much actually. So yeah, the um, getting the tools for the STM32 working will be one of the first um, videos that we're going to um, look at in in this project. And then we'll think about power supply and that sort of stuff. Um, I might do the I might do the audio stage here first because that is something that's fairly isolated from the rest of the system. If I have this designed, um, I can just drop in this as a sort of block into the rest of the design. Same thing actually with the power supply. I could design this as a block and then um, just put it in. The really interesting part is is this here and all the programming. But I really wanted to take the opportunity and um, actually get into STM32 because that's something that I wanted to do for a while now. So yeah, I think this will wrap up this video. And we'll see what we'll do on the next one. Maybe power supply stuff. Uh, maybe audio stuff. Um, but maybe we'll even look into the processor stuff first. Depends though. I really like to um, have these processors first. So I can sort of make my own board with that processor on and verify it against this board to just see that I designed everything correctly.